Let me show you how we can create more depth for our landscape photos by using targeted adjustments for lights and shadows with a bit of Lightroom editing and turn this flat landscape scene into this image. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. Okay, here we have a super flat landscape image, which we want to change. Before starting with the fun stuff, we want to get the basic adjustments out of the way. What this means for this shot is I want to crop the image because it's slightly off centered. So I'm just going to crop it a little bit, taking away a part from the right side. So the tree is right in the middle of the image, just like this. Then let's expand the basic panel. So for this scene, I do have something very saturated in mind and Therefore, I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape just to boost the base saturation a little bit. I also want to play around with the white balance because right now you can see a very heavy blue greenish color cast going on and that's not what we want. So let's try to neutralize that. I'm going to increase the temperature and let's raise it quite a bit until those three peaks up there in the histogram are aligning some more. I don't want to make it too yellowish either. So let me just go with something like this. There is still a green color cast. So we want to use the tin slider and just bring it up a notch to get rid of this heavy green color cast. Much better. Then we can work on the exposure. Actually, there is not much going on. I just want to get a little more contrast out of this image. You might think reducing the highlights, we will get some more details out of the sky, which we do in fact, but this really does not look that good. I want to work on the sky later on with targeted adjustments. So instead of bringing the highlights down all the way, I'm just going to drop them very, very slightly here. Then to increase contrast, I'm going to drop the shadows again, just very slightly. Okay. We can further bring up the contrast by increasing the whites. And finally, let's also bring down the blacks and always pay close attention to the histogram because we don't want to add any under or overexposure at this point of the editing. Okay, so at this point, not much has changed except for the better colors. Before we start with the light and shadow effects, let us also add a little bit of texture. I'm also going to add clarity. And we can even add dehaze, which helps to make this image look clearer. And it also helps to add a little bit of contrast. Okay. And finally, let's bring up the vibrance. Nice. We do have a little bit more contrast going on after the basic adjustments. But the purpose with these basic adjustments is to get our base image right for further editing. So it doesn't necessarily has to look great at this point. However, what we can do from this point on is to apply some targeted local adjustments to add light or shadows in places where we need them. So let's head into the masking menu. And I guess the area which needs the most contrast at the moment is the sky. So how can we do that? Let's create a simple sky selection. Lightroom shouldn't have a problem selecting the sky in this image, as you can see. Still, I want to slightly modify this mask. I want to say subtract and choose a radial gradient. And with that radial gradient, I'm basically removing that tree from the selection and a little bit of that edge between the field and the sky. So how can we add more detail to the sky? We could simply drop the exposure, revealing more clouds. But that's not what I want to do at this point. I want to create structure in this area before affecting the exposure. So I'm going to head down into the effects tab right here. And I want to bring up the clarity. This at the moment does not do much, but I want to combine the clarity with a little bit of dehaze. And watch what happens if I bring up the dehaze. Much better. So as the Lightroom algorithm tries to dehaze this image, it will also reveal more of these clouds in the sky, which before were invisible. If we do something like this, 
there's always the risk of noise being introduced into areas like this. So what I want to do to counter that problem is to simply drop the texture and we can safely drop the texture because we don't really need any sharp clouds up here. It does have a very nice smoothening effect on them. So that's looking great. Another downside of using dehaze like this is it changes the colors a little bit, which means in this case, we do have a more saturated sky. So I also want to fix that problem by simply bringing down the saturation here. Just like this, perfect. And that is it for the first mask for the sky. This was just to reveal more clouds up here. Now I'm going to create another linear gradient and stack it over the other mask on top of the sky. I want to cover pretty much all of the sky, going all the way down to the tree like this. And now we can actually bring down the exposure and create this nice contrast rich effect. Besides dropping the exposure, what we can do as well is set contrast, which will make the dark clouds even darker. And we can also add some further clarity to give those clouds some more structure. Perfect. I think we can bring it down even further. So we create some very dramatic dark clouds on top of this image. And I want to further work on this effect by stacking another linear gradient on top. I'm making it slightly smaller. So as we get higher up in the image, it gets darker. That's also the reason for me to not make this linear gradient as big as the first one. And in here, all I need to do is to bring down the exposure. I'm going to drop it quite a bit like this. And at this point, you can see we are creating this very cool vignetting effect. Perfect. Actually, let's raise this one a little further up. So really only the top part will get darkened, just like this. Now, besides darkening the sky, what we can do as well is to brighten up the sky. But of course, we don't want to affect the whole sky. We just want to target specific areas. So let me show what I mean by that by creating a sky selection mask. And as I just said, we don't want to affect the whole sky. So I'm going to click on those two dots, choose intersect mask with, and here we want to choose a linear gradient. And now I'm going to drag up a linear gradient just above the field in the distance. And I'm keeping this linear gradient rather subtle so this effect doesn't become too strong. I'm also going to tilt it very, very slightly. And now what we wanna do is to bring up the exposure and let's also bring up the whites. I'm going to raise them all the way up. And doing this, I'm going to kind of intentionally overexpose this area of the sky. This creates a very cool light effect and it doesn't really matter if it's overexposed because in that spot of the image. There is no important detail we are losing by overexposing. So this way we are just creating a very cool looking effect with the dark sky on top and the light coming in from just behind the hill. Okay, I think the sky looks great. Now let's work on the foreground. At the moment in the foreground, we kind of have the same brightness in the back of the field and in the front of the field. And that makes it a little bit boring. So again, we can just use a simple linear gradient covering most of the foreground like this. And to make it a little more interesting and add some more depth to the image, we are going to drop the exposure just a little bit at first. Don't overdo it. I'm also going to drop the shadows, just making this area slightly darker. And let's also drop the whites. You might be wondering why I don't just drop the exposure more instead of also dropping shadows at whites. The reason is simple. If I would drop the exposure more, I would introduce underexposure because the exposure slider affects highlights and shadows the same way. However, if I bring down the whites, the whites slider won't affect the shadows. So we are safe from underexposure. And for the foreground, I'm doing the same thing as I did for the sky, I'm going to stack a few linear gradients on top. So let's create another one covering most of the field like this. Actually, I want to bring it up a notch. And now what I'm going to do in here is to again drop the exposure a little more. 
yeah, I'm really paying close attention to the histogram right at this point. You can see there is a little bit of underexposure kicking in. What we can do to fix that if we want to drop the exposure is we can bring up the blacks and just like that, we got rid of the underexposure while still bringing down the exposure slider. I do think this area could use a little more punch. So what I'm doing as well is to bring up the clarity just like this perfect i'm pretty happy with how this image is looking after the masking adjustments we can take a look at before and after just like for this case you can turn a rather flat landscape scene into a very cool contrast rich image you just need to think about where it makes sense to add shadows or lights so from this point on, we can continue with a little bit of color grading. So let's head into the color mixer. I want to bring up the saturation of the yellow tones and the green tones. And I think I want to bring down the blue color saturation a little bit, really only just a little bit. And let's head into the luminance tab. Here we can work on the light situation a little more by bringing up the yellow luminance. We can also bring up the green luminance a bit. And these two sliders will mainly make the field right here in the foreground brighter. Okay, so I'm really happy with the colors. I'm not going to touch the split toning. However, I want to head down into the calibration tab. And I just want to add a little more saturation for the blue primary slider right here and the green one. Perfect, done. And now let's also do some sharpening in the details tab. Bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, and always hold down the Alt key so you can see where the sharpening is applied, and then bring up the amount of sharpening. All right, so that's it for creating light and shadow for this landscape scene. At this point, there are still a ton of sensor spots, so we can get rid of them using the healing tool. I'm going to use the heal brush. I'm making sure to visualize the spots, and then let's just paint over them. And that's it, much better. So I hope this little Lightroom tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have anything to add or have any questions about the editing, let me know in the comments of this video. And thank you so much for watching.